Welcome to the Chat Marketing Podcast, your number one place to learn actionable strategies and tips that help you have more profitable conversations with your customers. This podcast is here to help you grow your business by better understanding your customers, speak to them on another level, and grasp the opportunities that lie in the chat marketing industry. And now, let's get chatting with your host. Live from Melbourne, Australia, successful chat marketer and entrepreneur, Dan Pinney. Hello and welcome to episode five of the Chat Marketing Podcast. I hope you're doing well. We've got some amazing interviews coming up on the back of Conversations 2020, one of which is today's guest, who is Lauren Petrello of Mongoose Media. In today's episode, we talk about generating traffic and getting people to interact with your chatbot, how you can use SMS marketing in your business, and how you can use creative thinking to solve problems and innovate in your business. So without further ado, let's get into our chat with Lauren Petrello of Mongoose Media. Hello, folks. I'm very excited to bring you another major player in the powerful trio of the Bot Blondes. Today, it's my pleasure to have Lauren Petrello from Mongoose Media joining us. Lauren, welcome to the Chat Marketing Podcast. Wow, thanks so much for having me. Hi. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, We've just come off the back end of uh, Conversations 2020, which was a very exciting few days, quite exhausting few days as well for some of us. (laughs) Um, we'll get into that and we'll chat more about the chat marketing space, but let's, um, let, let's take it back a little bit before that and tell us a little bit about your background, where you come from and, uh, and how you got started into the space of chat marketing. Sure. So, um, I'm based in Florida right now, Orlando, Florida, and I moved here to do, uh, marketing for the Walt Disney company. And, uh, so that was my big girl job. The first one was like the big girl pants on. Um, and then in the hospitality space that dominates central Florida, um, I got to learn quickly about the power of lead generation and, um, selling vacation packages and understanding how we attract, uh, individuals to come and visit for seven, 10 days at a time, spending a minimum of $7,000 per family of four. Um, and, After a few years, I ended up uh, working at another agency, lost that job and uh, carved out my own space, created my own agency and thought that the power of Facebook targeting and all the platforms integrations related to Facebook were where I really wanted to niche down into. And actually Conversations 2018, the first mini chat conference was the only conference that I went to the first year I created my business. And I was like, wow, this messenger stuff, like I'm all in, this makes a lot of sense. You get to leverage the power of data from Facebook and use that for like relevant and personalized conversations to an even greater extent. And since then conversations continues to be the only conference I go to (laughs) for my agency. Tell us a little bit about um, your background in Disney then. How did you get into that and, and what lessons have you learned in you know, such a worldwide renowned brand that has you know, the customer experience, particularly in the space there in mm. tourism and in Orlando is everything. What lessons have you taken from that that's now impacted what you do day to day in your own business? So um, I kind of had a really coveted job at Disney. I was a part of an in-house idea agency. There were seven of us. We were Creative Inc. Um, We were led by Duncan Wardle, who is still recognized as one of like the leaders in innovation in North America. We use design thinking tools to come up with these out of the box activities, tactics, and campaigns to connect with our customers because Disney at least at Worlds, which is in Florida, half of the individuals that attended had already been to Disney World before and half were new time people. So we had to come up with ways to make the park traditional and time honoring for those that had returned as well as innovative and new for the people that hadn't been there. So like we just had to have this balance between um, what was iconic and what is innovative in the space for Disney. So I took a lot of those design thinking principles. Um, some of these activities that were larger than life had budgets that uh, you would never ever expect that you would get to be a part of and play with. Um, and 
take essentially that same core principle and apply it for a small business. Because at the end of the day, it's still, how do we create these magical moments? That's what we would do. And we try to always have surprise and delight infused in every campaign. And with chat marketing, you can do that all day long. And then how does that, um, or, or could you give us an example maybe of something that you did in Disney that was like memorable, you know, that, um, you know, you, you look back on now and you're like, that was an amazing experience and it's really shaped a lot of what I can do um, today. Um, I, I think like one of the coolest projects I got to be a part of uh, was there was the empowering girls movement. So essentially the response at the time, Dove had the uh, like a girl campaign. So fight like a girl. So they were trying to empower what like a girl means. And we were doing Disney's response to that campaign. Um, I got to work alongside the CMO of Disney at the time. Uh, we were out in California offices in Glendale and Anaheim. I was based, I'm based in Orlando. So we got to fly over there and we brought in individuals, not just within the Disney company, but we brought women who had been changing the conversation and to bring them to a part of it. So a lot of what we were planning, like one of my favorite pictures that came out of it was a Cinderella shoot. So the traditional picture of a girl running up the stairs and leaving her glass zipper behind, we had changed it to where it was an athlete leaving her cleat behind. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so taking that like little shift and borrowing what worked and applying it to a different context was something I really liked. So I've done that in several of our marketing campaigns where we've almost flipped the script and put things on their head to get attention, um, to start conversations, which is the whole point of chat marketing. Uh, and we've used that a lot with like our quizzes. So we'll, we'll ask questions like, okay, um, is this true or is this not fact or fiction? And, um, do a lot of like demystifying stuff, which is what the entire girls campaign or empowering women campaign was with that Disney. And I was like, Oh, there's one I really want to talk about, but I'm on NDA. So I can't, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going like high level of what it is. Yep. Uh, but if they get like, even though Disney is such a big company, um, at the time there were 154,000 people working for the entire company. The concept of this campaign was, how do you take the stereotype or the pre-existing notion, change one or two components of it to make it relevant in today's conversation and make it available to more individual that might have felt excluded from the conversation. So like with that Cinderella image, if you weren't a girly girl who wore dresses, who wore heels, you don't necessarily feel like the Disney princess, but why couldn't you be a Disney princess if you were, um, you know, an amazing athlete who's, incredible at your craft and you're not wearing heels but you're wearing athletic shoes tennis yep. shoes soccer cleats amazing i love that how has that then evolved into into mongoose media and then into chat marketing tell us a little bit about the the origins of mongoose media and you know then how that you mentioned that conversations was one of the first conferences you went to so you were fairly early in adopting chat marketing into your agency as well yeah, actually, so the agency that I had worked for before was based here in Orlando. We had been using ManyChat for about a year uh, before the help system was really set up. We were making tweaks and hacks. Like I remember creating a landing page within ManyChat because this was for a very large timeshare company and we wanted to promote the hospitality packages. And uh, so I would say it was even like earlier adopter. I, I mean, I remember Oh, the tools and the workarounds that you had to do in order to make your conversations work uh, would give any newbie nightmares, but it's okay. Like I wear it with a badge of honor, like I did it. Uh, but at the conversations conference, the enthusiasm from the many chat team, uh, the keen awareness of everyone else who's in this, like, oh, you do this and you do, oh, you did that with your real estate bot. This is what I had done for this Canadian national car campaign. Um, and it was just, really the community was so infectious that we were having conversations about our conversations. And I just thought this is where I wanted to be when I created the company in like March or April, 2018. I just knew that I wanted our focus to be with the end user and not focus on who necessarily the client is or the people at the top. Cause we'd worked with really big brands before and uh, they're too far removed 
So the idea of having one-on-one -on -one conversations and automate, automating them a bit and connecting that bridge somehow to save time for customer service was like, oh, this is a no brainer. And, and they have a help desk that will help you navigate through anything you mess up. I was like, this is handing my job on a silver platter. <laughs> and, and so how do you now integrate chat marketing into your agency? Um, you do a number of different services, but mm. um, tell us a little bit more about what you do and, and how you use chat marketing in the agency. Sure. So, um, you know, the shoe cobbler story. Uh, my chat bot, like I, I made some tweaks this weekend. They announced like conversation starters. So I had finished my conversation starters within two hours of them making that update. Uh, but we do a lot of, so lead generation and e-commerce are two areas of focus. And we go after either cold audiences or warm audiences. And Facebook is more often than not, sometimes Pinterest, the most cost-effective way of getting in front of cold audiences. And we do that through a number of ways, driving traffic to the site, producing content, um, getting folks connected via lead magnets. So we charge on the PPC principle, like that's how our model works. And we build in chatbots already to just support the Facebook ad side of items. We do have a few clients that are chatbot only, uh, but for the most part, it's just to have a more integrated system because if we're trying to get the cold people to the website, you can do that well with conversations and overcome how long it may take for someone to buy. We have one client, it's a 28 day purchase window. If you look into Google ads, you're like, oh my gosh, that takes so long. So we can use conversations to overcome any obstacles that a potential consumer might have. And then we can use Facebook to do hyper targeted funnels to where they are in the buyer's journey. Um, other things that we do, um, again, like the quizzes are the most fun because of the lead generation aspect to it. But right now I'm working on almost a full concierge bot for this one client, like in her industry, there is not a lot of competition for organic natural hair care for women of color. So we're just putting together this space where you can connect and get all of the information. And it's got a three prong system where we're promoting the products, the community, and then the education side, because right now three in five black women use or wear their hair naturally, but not that many are necessarily using natural hair care products. So um, we are starting to do more from the omni-channel approach of uh, essentially not needing you to ever go online. You can just interact and engage and have a conversation directly with the brand. It's amazing. How do you find chatbots compared to other mediums um, <laughs> and how, you know, deciding which is the right medium for you from an e-commerce, from a lead generation perspective, mm -hmm. Do you find they perform better or worse depending on, you know, goal, et cetera? Um, what insights yeah. have you have generated? I think the best part is definitely the dynamic content variables because you can use the user's input and regurgitate right back to them. So if someone specifically says, oh, I don't know, this, you know, infopreneur related project, this course is too expensive, we can respond like, like so cool. When you said that the cost itself is too much right now, we just want to double check that uh, you've seen the case that is you understand the value you get out of it. Our goal is just to make sure that the value of our course is significantly cheaper than the value you get out of it. So we just want to make sure that we're in alignment with that and having the conversation spitting back at them uh, has helped lead to a lot more conversions, at least on that side of business. Um, and personalization, like, yes, you can do it with email, but a lot of times people will put their their name as like, mine will be Lauren E. Petrullo. And the email like, hey, Lauren E. Petrullo, mm -hmm. and use the dynamic name inside other parts of copy. And if I misspelled my name somehow, I'm like, oh, can you just change it? Like, stop calling me Princess Unicorn or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's true well how do you then decide where chat marketing fits in a, in a strategy and let's say from a, a facebook advertising perspective because a lot of people i think will and, and even in conversations they may have seen if they were there talking about you know it's not such a build it and they will come type thing we need to be able to generate some interest and some traffic to the bot so how do you then decide where chat marketing fits in the strategy and at the top, bottom, middle of the funnel, you know, how do you make those decisions? Uh, most of the time, the decision is based on budget, like full disclosure. Yeah. 
Um, Cause it depends on how much we can put into the push and pull marketing tactics that we're implementing. Um, I definitely find that the closer they are in the funnel, the more chat marketing can be applied because if someone's at an add to cart, so we do a lot of add to cart and um, retargeting for cart abandonments. Uh, we give special offers to incentivize people to rebuy new product launches. So when we have someone that's already gotten almost to the purchase phase, or if they have already purchased and we want them to come back and become loyal raving fans, chat marketing is going to be the cheapest venue, especially now that we're shifting to a lot more SMS related strategies. So everything that I was saying earlier about this hair care company is a hundred percent SMS right now. We're going to have some emails related to it because one of the items is a hair care quiz and we're going to deliver an email directly from our money chat bot with the coupon code. Um, but for the most part, if there is not a lot of budget to prospect, it's going after the low hanging fruits. We have like 19 and 20% additional revenue that we earn from our cart abandonment campaigns. We get um, like the case study reference at conversations we had a chat bot that we implemented, which is a coupon campaign to offer to new users to get them to subscribe to the bot that generates $7,500 in like a couple of days without spending a dollar on Facebook advertising money. Um, so when there's shoestring budgets, we like to do those kind of things. But when there is budget, when the clients know the lifetime value of the subscribers, we'll go after top of funnel lead generations that aren't necessarily downloadables, but ones that you we use as qualifiers. So that's when I, I use them. They're much better than if you just do a lead magnet because you want to understand where someone fits, what products make the most sense for them. So that's why I really like using chat marketing. Email is not going to give you enough information back. You're not going to be able to say, Hey, I want to know, um, I don't know. Like, I want to know how old your kids are. Who's going to reply that into an email, like pass. They're not even opening email most times. So. Mm. Yeah, it's very true. Let's talk a little bit about Facebook advertising space. I think people would be interested to um, hear how you drive people from the news feed into the inbox, for instance, because it's a fairly new a type of ad for people when they're clicking on something and are used to go into a website, but then all of a sudden they get a pop-up message either in Messenger or at the bottom of their, their desktop window, it's pretty new. So how do you make that link between the two to make sure that, you know, you're delivering on what you said and you can encourage them to open it as well? Uh, so there's two ways that we do that. One is through the copy and the other is through the image. So if we're doing a e-commerce campaign and we want them to learn more about the products, we'll put uh, Messenger related icons inside the ad itself. So I think familiar like oh okay this opens in messenger but we'll use opens in messenger or we'll say like message us here as the the text line we might even at times test like text us now so that they know that it's going to be conversation based but if you don't set the expectations in the copy i wouldn't use it in the first three lines of copy but if you don't put it in the learn more component there's going to be that friction like whoa, 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 whoa where are you taking me even though it's strange because it's often faster of a load than some landing pages are but I imagine in two years from now that people are going to be more anticipatory of it opening a conversation versus it taking it to a website. Cause I think people want to just go directly to the source. Yeah. But for, yeah, we would just use, you can use it in so that you have the, the description, you have the headline, and then you have the text. So we put it in the text part, the really long form copy. And then we also put it into our headline in some way. I use a lot of emojis in our Facebook ad copy. So I'll sometimes have an emoji like pointing to the button and like literally like message us now um, or text us today pointing to it. And then the button itself can be send, send message so that when they click on it, they're reading send message to signal it. Um, and I think those are really important because otherwise you're going to see a click through rate or like a high CPC. So cost per click, but you're not going to have a high engagement rate. Yep. Yep. There were really great points. And you mentioned on the future in a couple of years when people are opening them let's talk about the future and particularly after you know conversations uh, a couple of days ago how do you think messenger fits in let's call it chat marketing because the big buzzword come out of conversations was omni channel so how are you going to 
react to the future? What do you anticipate for the future in your agency and in the chat marketing space? I think there's going to be overwhelm for a lot of clients of how many people want to DM them. Like we already have the words like slide into the DMs, like, hey, check our DMs. We have bots that are encouraging users to get into DM conversations with brands. But we're going to take that beyond Instagram into other things. Like I text companies like we another component that we do is we provide Google My Business services. So we optimize that and you can chat. You can literally text a company using Google My Business. And so I just think that the time of calling a company through a 1-800 number, looking up their customer service number is getting old. You're put into a robot system where you have to do, um, hey, I want to go to this. Are you calling for sales? Are you calling for support? That takes too long. I just want to type what I'm looking for and be immediately directed to the person that's most relevant. And I think especially now with COVID and um, how everyone's inside, we're getting our stuff immediately to us. I mean, think about Prime, how Prime shipping and one-click buy changed the entire e-commerce space for all companies outside of Amazon as well. People want their products delivered tomorrow at the latest because we're expecting to get it today. I think that's going to be the same expectation interaction of connecting with brands that you have questions about that you want to buy. I mean, you can even look at say, so I bank with Chase and I go to their chat window and it's like, Oh, I have to wait two hours. I get annoyed. I'm like, Oh, you're not a real brand. Mm -hmm. At least put me into an automated system and I can keyword it so that you can have it seem like I'm talking one-on-one -on -one and qualify me so that the person can come on and jump into the conversation. But yeah, I, I just think that people are going to be more comfortable texting. Also, I live in America where in 2050, the demographic space is going to shift and we're going to have more Spanish speakers. We're going to have more individuals that English is not their first language and they're more comfortable texting and more comfortable chatting where they can read the conversation. So to me, it's, I think it's even faster than a lot of people are anticipating with like 2021, 2022. I think it's going to happen then versus in five years. And anyway, those are my assumptions. People want to chat. People want to be multitasking. And you can't do that when you're on the phone and it's taking up your the one line that you have because you have to switch between them or you merge them and one company might have weird phone calls and there's no privacy. So, yep. anyway. How would you um, use those predictions to now have you shifted how you educate current and potential clients as well and talk about chat marketing? If How do you, how do you even have that conversation maybe for the first time to a new client where you like they go i've heard about these bot things what are they you mm. know how, how do you start that conversation so if we're doing our facebook ads we tell them that a lot of what will affect our ads is how you engage on them if we have people that like or comment on our ads you need to respond to them because it's like if you're in the store and you're spraying perfume at them and you're only spraying perfume at people when they walk by, but they come up to you and say like, oh, what is that smell? Do I smell lavender? And you don't respond to their comment. You're straight up ignoring an individual who has come to your sales table to start dialogue. So we say like, it's really important that you start monitoring those comments. You start engaging with those likers and often it gets to be overwhelming. So we'll say, hey, Let's build an FAQ sheet together. Let's understand what are people asking you? Because if they're doing it three times, anything that takes more than three times should be automated. So we'll build all that out. We can use keyword triggers and then just save them time. Because once it's done, it's done. I mean, we'll keep monitoring it. And they're like, wow, I didn't know you could do this. And so like, all right, well, why don't we talk about um, menu items? Why don't we make the experience better? So when they do DM us, we can get to their answer sooner. Because some of my clients, are, or their ideal customers are young moms and young moms can be really active at three in the morning when their child is wide awake and they're desperate for them to go to sleep. So what are they doing? They're perusing on social media. You're not on social media at three in the morning, but you could be. And we can do that with chat bots and like, okay, show me how this works. If it makes sense, good. And they, they provide the information that they want to put in front of their users anyway. So it's a no brainer most of the time. Nice. I love it. How are you, um, how are you looking at, uh, your agency in the, in the future? I noticed that you did your MBA, um, this year or graduated your MBA, um, this year. So 
how um talk a little bit about your agency and also how it's grown and how it's now evolved into integrating chat marketing in the agency as well yeah. um so yes the mba is done oh my goodness that was how was that um it was all online and if i could change one thing about the program I hated that the advisors and everyone lived in email or via phone because I would just chase them and I couldn't find one email thread and I couldn't talk to the right person. I was like, can't you just chat me? Like literally just send me a message, have it in a place so that you can respond when you're ready back because the emails you're not responding to or I'm not looking at them. And it just became too backlogged. But um, for the agency, so I started Mongoose Media like March or April, 2018. Um, there were two of us to begin with. And then really November last year, we exploded a bit. Like we started taking on like our first team members that were like a hundred percent full time. Um, and now we're up to 15. So wow. we're almost a year later and that's like 10 X growth, which is, is fun because we're a hundred percent referral base, but with how conversations are going with this omni-channel approach we've actually just shifted how our roles are so we did an entire reorg so we have a content team and a production team and so our content team we have our content manager and then everyone that's under her are account specialists where they know our, that client inside and out so similar to the account manager strategy but their job is to not only know the client's products inside or not but they're to know the user inside and out because we're training like our content specialists not to just be a Facebook advertiser or not just to be like a blog writer, but there to be the first point of interaction for anyone that connects with their brand. And if that's in chatbots, if that's, you know, having a blog that you can deliver to them that gives them the best answer, that's what we're having them do. So it's absolutely restructured it so that we're not having a specialist that does this and does this and does this everywhere. We're having an omni-channel account specialist. So that's how we're shifting and it's made the process and onboarding so much easier. Yeah, that's really fascinating. I think agencies will take a lot out of that to, you know, how to how to structure their business to cater mm. for an environment that is changing so quickly, right? Yeah. It's it's uh particularly after the last few days of conversations and seeing also what's on the horizon that in a year's time it, conversations 2021 whether it's in person or not it'll be a different dare i say it conversation um <laughs> <laughs> that that we'll be having around yeah. how people interact with one another you've obviously uh, i was really surprised you know you've in two years time have grown to to 15 people um which is a credit to yourself and and you know to be able to grow a business to that size and be profitable as well how I always ask this question to guess how much of your success over the years and particularly in the last couple of years has come down to hard work and how much has come down just to, to pure luck. Oh, uh, that's, I mean, that's hard for me <laughs> because, um, there's just been this concept that, uh, so we've sold five or six clients completely out of inventory. And when it happened the first time, like, Oh, shoot, that's a cool scenario to be in. Then it happened again, like, wait, we did this twice. And then when, now it's uh, like five or six times, you're like, okay, this is like legit a problem because we, we took on a new client and we preface her like, we cannot take you on unless you have your inventory queued up because you're going to have more sales. Like we're guaranteeing we're gonna disrupt your your infrastructure and your supply chain management. So I cannot take you on as a new client until I know your inventory management is, is good. And it was good. And six weeks later, we sold them out again. Um, so I, I don't know if it's necessarily hard work per se. It's just, we keep reapplying the formulas that we know are working and it's getting actually like less work because we're more efficient at it. Um, and it just, it literally keeps working. So I think there's a lot of it of luck because the strategy is working. It just it keeps working. And so don't stop, but. But I think that's also credit to you to be able to have the knowledge and the formula, um, to be able to back that doesn't just sort of, you know, I, I think to be able to sell out twice 
probably proves that it wasn't just luck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> coincidence, maybe, but um, I highly doubt it. Uh, you also mentioned from your previous role, and, and that resonates with me a little bit because we were both in the same thing where we, we both got fired from our role before we started our business. Yeah. Do you look back on that and go, it was a blessing in disguise? Oh, I mean, the day that that conversation happened, my husband was like, this is the greatest thing. Oh my gosh, finally, you can be your own boss. Your creativity can like let loose. And it did let loose. And until probably last year when we started bringing on more people, I was working 15 hours a week. And our first client, like agency client, if you will, that I brought on, they were a company that was doing $400,000 a year in revenue. In the 16 months we worked together, we pushed them to be $3.2 million company. Wow. And the biggest change was that we took one like, hey, let's go to the consumer. Let's do B to C, let's connect with them. And I remember when the owner checked her bank account after our first like month of running ads together, she called the director of marketing who hired us and asked if her bank account had been hacked. And she called and I was like, wait, what? Oh my gosh, I thought this was good. And this is at a time when Facebook Pixel wasn't even as good as it is now. Um, it's gotten to be so much better. Like we didn't have the currency connected to it. Uh, but she thought someone had broken into her account and accidentally deposited a <laughs> hundred grand. <laughs> um, so that knowing like how we did some small things that we thought made sense, like, like, yeah, that tracks the logic works and seeing the massive success that it brought allowed us to feel energized and fueled to keep going. And it brought on a lot of referrals because the numbers in our case studies turn heads. I mean, we had a client we started with and in their first 90 days this year, we did a million dollars in e-commerce sales within 90 days. And their ad spend plus our management fee was like 97,000 total. Wow. So, it's so, so I mean, it's fun, but again, the conversations of like, oh my gosh, you're out of inventory. What do we do? Yeah. Um, are getting tired. I know that sounds so, so terrible, but like, <laughs> I was like, come on, like be ready, like be ready for this. It's a good problem Anyways. to have. It's a good problem to have. Um, for the client, for the yeah. agency side, like we have to reset all of our algorithms because we have to reteach the, we've reteach Google ads what the consumer is going to look for because right now they keep going to the website and there's nothing there. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. No, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. I'm just being like, uh, annoying. Oh, no, don't worry. I, I think a lot of agencies would resonate with that as well. <laughs> being like, yeah, we'd all love to have prepared clients, but <laughs> that, to let us know when that happens. Is there anything I haven't asked yet that you think people would find valuable? I think just, Coming out of conversations, again, just reemphasizing the SMS, if people are looking to add chat marketing solutions to your agency and you don't have a client that's necessarily willing to pay for it, offer that as an enhanced service, grab the case study because we are, again, only a referral company and we had our case study and then it just, we ended up having grandfather clients and then great grandfather referral clients. Um, so like really just find someone started off, even test with your own agency page, but if you can find a small business, help them out. COVID's hard, grab the single case study. And if they're still leery of Facebook, I mean, it's political season. You don't know how Facebook is with your data collection, which I found a lot more to be true in the U S that they're skeptical of Facebook messenger. Cause they themselves aren't active on Facebook messenger, um, power in through SMS because every company right now wants to have an SMS solution. And you can do really basic flows that you can have someone order their coffee and you can set that all done through SMS so that all they have to do is place the order. When they come and pick up, it's already ready for them. Yeah. And so I was just like, push that. And now with the announcement of the app store and the ability uh, to yeah. be able to integrate SMS um, for those that are outside of the US and and in Australia it was only recently announced but we had a little week hiatus at one point but if if you're outside of um, any of the countries where it doesn't natively integrate uh, with many chat or you also want to send international SMS as well there are mm -hmm. solutions now that tie directly into the platform I think that's going to be a game changer for SMS marketing and for people to go well, yeah 
I don't need to worry about these slight barriers. I've got a solution there. I can text people no matter where they are around the world. And then, mm. of course, we've got um, the big one coming up that Mike announced, WhatsApp as well, yeah. which is, is going to change. So I think WhatsApp in that same conversation as SMS and deserves to be there as well, that, you know, those conversations outside of Messenger are going to be super important. Oh, yeah, because those platforms, especially with the integrations of the app store, like Bocce and Walletly, like having them natively in, it's a game changer. Like you almost don't have an excuse to not have a really good campaign. Um, but yeah, for sure with WhatsApp, I think also with the very near Instagram integration, I, I mean, my personal prediction is Instagram and Facebook have been pushing the organic shops. And yes, they take a percentage. But if you're going to start having Instagram direct messages, I have in the infopreneur space, most of those clients sell directly in DMs. Imagine you're a business coach. Imagine you're um, a fitness coach and you're going out and you're having these conversations back and forth, back and forth. A lot of that could be automated. Yeah. And if you're not using it in the Instagram space, you can pull that even further of like, hey, text me at this number. Yeah, it, it's got to change the game, I think, for a lot of businesses out there. Um, where can people find you? Where can they connect with you if they want to find out a little bit more about you and what you do? Uh, cool. So our agency social channels are all around Mongoose Media or Mongoose Media LLC is the Instagram. Um, the bot blondes, the BOT blondes, yeah. uh, is the most active social. I am, I run a digital marketing agency that does a lot of social media, but I'm not super super useful in social media. So if you DM me, it's going to take me a while to respond, full disclosure. But if you DM bot blondes or mongoose media, there are people that are running those accounts that will get onto them much sooner. Um, LinkedIn is really easy because I get those notifications to my phone. So Lauren E. Petrullo. But I know most people use Instagram. Oh, wait, actually, hold on. I set this up. You can text me. I built my SMS bot this morning. Hold nice. on. Let me give you my number. Yes. We'll also put a link to that in the show notes well, as well. Two zero five six nine seven three five five four. Boom, nice. Text her and say hi. I like that. I love that. And, and how is it like? That's actually a really good example of how people can say, you know, go and find us on Facebook or search for a username at so and so on Instagram. It's just like, you know, want to get in touch? Text. Blah blah yeah. blah, blah. Like, how easy was that? You just get your number. Bang, off you go. You don't even need to search in any of those platforms. And that, if you text chat marketing podcast to that number, I will have a whole flow built up so you can go in everything. Amazing. Yeah. We'll definitely have all the links in the show notes for the people to check out. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much uh, for taking out um, some time out of your day and recapping a little bit around conversations. I know it's been a big few days for you and the bot blondes and uh, getting everything together, but it's been really fascinating to learn a little bit more about you what you do, the person that sits behind Mongoose Media and, and some of those campaign examples are phenomenal. So congratulations on that experience and thanks once again. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. This is so fun. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again. Now we've got to get Trilce on. Yeah, that's it. We'll get the we'll get the final, the third musketeer. The the fun size blonde. Yeah, that's it. Fun what are you which one are you? The tall blonde. I'm the tall blonde. Yeah. Tall blonde. I'm the shortest in my family because my father was two meters three. Um, wow okay <laughs> so i am the tall one but like it's all relative yeah that's very true all right i love it thanks so much well i hope you enjoy that episode with lauren she is very good at what she does and her case studies speak for themselves hey i've got a favor to ask have you enjoyed the first few episodes of the chat marketing podcast if so i'd love for you to help out other chat marketers and make it easier for them to find this podcast by leaving a review you can head to the website at marketingpodcast.chat, that's marketingpodcast.chat, to find the links and leave a review. We've got some great interviews coming up, so until then, take care. We'll chat to you soon.